What's going on, everybody? How's everybody doing? The market looks interesting. You think this is just a correction in the market? Yeah, I mean, um, with everything that happened over the pandemic, I think it may be the market catching up with maybe the pandemic a little bit. But even if, I mean, um, this may be the beginning of, you know, a, a crash, which everybody keeps predicting. There's a ton of people that are saying, hey, you know, the market <clears throat> is going to crash soon and we have tons of reasons why, but nobody can really predict when this crash is going to come. Um, they've been saying this for the last three years that a crash was going to come. So um, it's definitely looking ridiculous. What's crazy is you see everything that's down. Just look at this chart. Hopefully you can see everything. You have Riot, uh, Tilray, Mavis, uh, Sundial. <clears throat> you have all of these different positions <coughs> that are down. Um, and, you know, even to the point to where Churchill is down 33%. But look at, look at something like AMC, which you would think would be down as well. You look at this and they're up 5% in the pre-market, 14% yesterday. They're, they're moving up. Yes, you do have um, some sort of pullback right now, but they're moving up compared to everything else in the market. You know, Tesla, Bitcoin, everything is going down. But this is how much manipulation we had. Look at this information over here. Look at this. You see how many sell orders are coming in? How many buy orders are coming in? This is what was crazy. This is a reversal of whatever manipulation took place. AMC is the only thing that's up in the market. I wouldn't say it's the only thing, but everything that I'm looking at, it's the only thing that's up. I don't, this is the thing. Um, People are saying that, you know, it's because of, um, you know, theaters opening up. But no, it's the fact that we hold a ton of the volume, whatever manipulation they were doing. Um, they're actually looking at this and saying, uh, well, we have to reverse this manipulation. And all of the people that are holding are driving this price up. People that are buying as well are driving it up even more. So it's looking it's looking good for AMC, but everything is pretty much like down when it comes to stocks. Oil is up, that's good. What's going on, Scott? How you doing? I feel like <clears throat> my voice and everything is getting a little bit better. I'm not losing my voice when I start talking, that's good. Hello, Paul. Good morning, everyone. I did see that Bitcoin was down. Yeah, I mean, CCIV looks ridiculous right now. Um, I've seen a lot of positivity in it, and it looks crazy the way that it's moving. And um, from different um, videos that I've seen, different people talking about it, I've seen that they said there might have been some sort of manipulation that was happening. I mean, I really didn't see it over yesterday. Looking at from um, open to close, it looked pretty flat. It was just something that stayed flat the whole day. I didn't think we had any type of manipulation and now we're just seeing a downward market. I mean, this it's pretty much everything that's down. It's not just uh, Churchill Capital. It's a lot of things. Yeah, you're going to see the cats walking around. <clears throat> that's all they do. Maybe Carl or maybe Carl will um, grace us with his presence and jump up here like he usually does. Um, Yeah, it seems like everything is red. Yeah, everybody hit the like button. We have 206 people in here. If you could hit that like button, that would be amazing. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's, um, you said uh, deal with, with Lucid confirmed, but uh, the price is diving. It seems like everything is diving. Um, manipulation and Lucid announced a delay in their production. I don't think that would cause a 30% dive though. <clears throat> this is the thing. I think this is way more than news right now. I think this is more of a um, slight correction in the market, but also um, seeing just 
you know, a downward market. I mean, you're going to see down days across the board, but this looks a little bit ridiculous. Looks more like the beginning of maybe a crash. <clears throat> Are you adding to AAC, AMC position today? I'm not adding to AMC position, uh, position today. If I did see that um, in the beginning of the day, if I look at <clears throat> if I look at what happened literally in the open, um, or I'm uh, sorry, in the open of the pre-market, it went up to $7.34. That's absolutely phenomenal. And I was, um, I seen it uh, drop down significantly and I was like, all right, here we go. We're going to see some form of manipulation, but I guess they just can't hold it. <clears throat> so you have a lot of people that are either willing to buy or we're just holding and um, whatever they're doing on the short side is actually going against them. So I'm not going to be buying into more positions of AMC. I'm going to hold my positions. I would, I would only invest more into it if it went down to that $5 mark again, because I do see potential in it. <clears throat> but yeah. Exponential moving average is just a, a more of a weighted moving average than a simple moving average. It gives you a better look on things and having a more simplistic view of something that's short term just makes it easier to track. Um, uh, something that's weighted um, long term obviously will give you um, a better look on the long term strength of it. So hopefully that helps, Eric. It just makes it easier to track. In in um, in my case, most times I'm just looking for that pull away from the 15, or some. Most times I'll have a 20 moving average here to see it pull away, and then I'll add some other. Um, indicators as well to see how far it will pull back different levels of support that it could hit so that's what I'm really looking for <coughs> yeah something is definitely going on with the overall overall market it's not anything that's driven by news um, it's something that you can see it across the board of every single sector um, I guess besides certain ones like um, oil or you can see Bitcoin is even you know dropping <coughs> And I was actually looking at that and seeing that Bitcoin was dropping. Um, I think it is increasing, but it's crazy how far it fell over the last couple of days. But now it's starting to go up because it did drop down to uh, 45. And now it's starting to move up to 49, back above or close to 50. So that's good. Making its way back up. I don't think AMC is going to 100. <clears throat> I mean, hey, it, not today, especially. I think possibly it, it could get there depending how much manipulation was there. But yeah, you okay? Sounding a bit sick. I was um, kind of sick. I'm not sick now, though. Um, I still have a cough. It's still there. You know, how sometimes when, uh, especially when I wake up um, early, I, that's why I started at 745 because my voice wasn't fully ready so had to get some water and cough drop and all that other stuff uh, let me look at <coughs> uh, right now you can see that AMC is up 5.5 percent GME is down 3.9 percent SNDL um, that's really I believe it's just following the sector but everything is just down not based on any news or anything which I would have said SNDL should have been more of a recovery day um, if I did look at where it was, I would say that it should have been more of a recovery day. We should have seen this. Um, it is kind of flattening out, but towards the pre-market here, you could see it did drop 10%. That's obviously something that's affected by the overall market, not just S&DL. So I do think that this um, will remain flat as long as we don't see a market crash. If we see a market crash, then things get a little bit more difficult to swallow. So that's where... <clears throat> That's where um, trading intraday really gives you the, the benefit. Um, you know, get some water and honey. I've had tea and honey just to warm things up. <clears throat> the CCIV is a great example of saying buy the rumor, sell the news. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I, I like I said, I think it's not a news situation. I don't think this would be a great example of that. 
<clears throat> yes, you, you should buy the rumor in any case because a lot of people are driving up prices because of the rumors. Um, and even the news, it's just the fact that the overall market is just down. You know, people are, are overall selling at this point for some odd reason. Maybe institutions are selling large portions. We don't really know exactly. Get a chance, what's your um, input on OG EN? <coughs> <coughs> Um, <clears throat> so let's look at the 10,000 foot view. You can see it does, it is having that decrease um, from the last few days. Um, let's see, it was uphill for a number of days. You did see um, quite a bit of <clears throat> distance between the 15 moving average and the, um, the 200 EMA. So that's good. And you do see some fight in it. It continues to drive up the price. It's not anything that's a quick grower, which is always a great thing. If you do have those quick growers and you're gonna have a quick fall, but sometimes those slow growers can be um, just as dangerous, especially with any of these gap ups. I never like to see gap ups because with any gap ups, you're gonna see a pretty decent fall, especially down to where it actually gapped up. So you may see something resist at this point. You see a lot of buy orders coming in and or have a support level at this point. You see a lot of buy orders coming in versus the sell orders. So it may be you know close to where it's getting of a low, but remember the market is down. So the market being down, it can continue to drive down that price rather than um, bring it up. <clears throat> so overall down 8% in the pre-market yesterday, down uh, three and a, uh, over three and a half percent, closer to 4%. So um, definitely find where the bottom is, but you do see a lot of buy orders coming in here. Um, not a crazy amount because it's only like tens of thousands, but yeah, sell the cats. I'm not going to sell the cats. They're pretty amazing. They're moving their money. Relax. It's a, it's a big money, uh, big money moving all around. I mean, that could be a possibility. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say, uh, I'll get into that, Peter. Yeah, I, I would say that, <clears throat> yeah, that could be a possibility that they're uh, moving big money, right? Um, <clears throat> how serious do I think the crash will be? Well, any crash that we had, um, it was pretty serious. You know, you've seen a really big move. This is why, I mean, just for the fact that we would have a crash, you know, every like 10 years or whatever, right? Um, it still <clears throat> makes me think, that I'm doing the right move by holding my money intraday and not really holding positions. Yes, I do have certain positions out there, um, mutual funds, whatever, that really is controlled by the market. But um, I would say a lot of my, someone said short the cats. <laughs> uh, I would say a lot of um, what I like to do is more the short term intraday stuff. So it's not something that I hold overnight and, and take a, a crazy, you know, 50%, 60% loss. So, <coughs> the market is definitely um, taking a dive, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm panicking. Um, I can tell you that it, it is, corrections usually lead to some sort of a crash, but I, I don't want to sit here and say that it is a crash. I'm not going to be one of those persons, one of those persons, one of those people that say, um, you know, crash coming, crash coming tomorrow. What, is, what are you doing, cat? I don't understand it. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely looking like we're seeing some, a lot of negativity here. I just want to call it out. But yes, it is a correction across the board. Um, I just hope it's not an overall market correction um, to where you, know, you obviously see everything drop down a significant amount, you know, 20, 30 percent or whatever we've seen in March to where the overall market was just dropping and dropping and dropping and they had to stop trading for a while. They had to pause, pause the market. <clears throat> What's my target for AMC? I have a, a target of, of seeing it get to 
in between first seeing it get between that 10 to 15 dollar mark where i think it should hover um then if it gets above 15 that's where i'll keep my um my trailing like stop at that point and then after that um i'm looking to push to 20 but hopefully tomorrow you said tomorrow i said what Uh, we have uh, 600 people in here. If you could hit that like button, would love 200 likes. Drop a like on this video. You know, I've been doing YouTube for however long, and I haven't said drop a like. <coughs> I've never said that. I've said smash the like button. Um, I've said hit the like button. Never said drop a like on this video. But drop a like down down below. Also, drop a comment. <clears throat> Tomorrow, you said. I, what? <clears throat> Will there be other uh, things to invest in while people are distracted? Hope that makes sense. Um, that's where it'll, it'll end up being tough. I'm sure there will be. I'm sure other markets will react differently. Um, you may still see um, some positivity in some some Bitcoin, some cryptocurrency. You may see some positivity in um, you know oil, you know silver, wh whatever it is. You may see um, different sectors thrive while most of the markets are collapsing but for the most part you're going to see it uh drop down <clears throat> uh robert uh land landa how much can you make as a youtuber you can make decent money as a youtuber if you look at a video um by uh, meet kevin if you search it online and how much he made um i i can't remember what it was but <clears throat> um i know that he makes a lot i know that um Graham Stephan makes a lot right you can make a lot of money as a youtuber and um i think yes drop a like on this video 160 likes i appreciate it get it to 200 likes <clears throat> but yeah you can make a lot of money as a youtuber i can say that i'm very transparent with my youtube revenue um i make videos on it on all the time in 2020 <clears throat> i made about six close to 65,000, i believe um on on youtube <clears throat> which is you know really close to what i make in my nine to five i mean it's like tens of thousands off so um it's something where you have potential to make a lot of money not just a side gig you know what i mean so youtube you can definitely make some good money um if you want to check it out and you feel like you have anything um of interest you have any videos that you can record anything that you want to monetize <clears throat> you can definitely do so and it even comes into play to where one you can get business write-offs for the things that you really love to do so if you love to you know um, trade during the day and you monetize it and you create a business out of it then anything you bought to trade because the fact that you're monetizing it for your business um, you can technically write off um, as a business expense and um, that's where it ends up being really great yeah I I'm, I'm very transparent with my my YouTube revenue at yeah, 65 K was uh, a little bit of a surprise because that was my first like full year on YouTube. I made 65,000. So, um, this year I'm on track to eclipse that, but yeah. <clears throat> judging by, <coughs> this is a, um, judging by all the red today, uh, of people who are going to be buying into the green AMC uh, another big day incoming but uh, I'll be happy if AMC can hold around seven yeah that's what I've been saying I was saying today if it does open at at like if it does open uh, at eight which I don't know if it will push up to eight um, you will see a little bit of a sell-off what you're seeing with AMC is you're seeing a lot of um, great moves here you're seeing um, volatility and the good thing is right now you're seeing more positivity than anything compared to everything else that's out there. 
So that's why um, I, I definitely can say that it, it kind of makes no sense looking at the order books because the order books are showing, you know, basically, you know, 100,000 or so um, sell orders while you have half, half of that as buy orders. So um, it's not really showing the true picture. Um, right now it is. It's showing that we are seeing a decrease, but for the most part, you're seeing a lot of sell orders come in while the price increases. <coughs> Do I know about SLS fraud rumors? I don't know about that. So there's a fraud investigation. Oops. Me? That's a YouTube video. I don't want to watch a YouTube video. All of these are YouTube videos. I need an article. Um. Oh, it's pull up the Secretary of State. I mean, those are, those are rumors. I need, I need some actual like facts. I need some evidence here. Um, you can have rumors, but I need some, I need some facts. Uh, CCIV, um, I, I talked about it earlier, down 36%. This is just a, I, I wouldn't say this is totally the correction because you can see, you know, obviously a, a, a lot of uh, buy orders and sell orders that are equal to each other. But you have that whatever correction it is and people are just following, you know, with anything that goes up rapidly, if people start to sell off, then a lot of people start to jump ship as well. And if they do, then, um, uh, you know, others will follow. And that's, I think, what you're seeing. And once you see it level out, this may be a chance to actually get into um, this position at a low point. But you just really need to see um, what's going to happen once it does open. Um, it's it's very tricky, but you need to figure out what the the low point is, what the that bottom out point is, and it may be at this thirty three dollar mark. You might need to invest now, but I always like to wait for the open volume to see exactly what's happening and if people are going to buy it up. But right now it looks like a down market, so you might want to um, wait it out and get in at a lower price and then drive it up to you know that sixty sixty something dollar mark or even higher than that, depending where it actually was. $64 mark. So yeah, I think it, it's definitely, it definitely looks like it's really having that, that really quick drop to where it's being completely oversold. But you know, um, you got to wait for that bottom. You got to wait for it. <clears throat> six fifty five. Um, that's what it closed at. It's at six eighty one at, at this moment. Um, in the pre-market. What site am I using? This is Weeble. This is the Weeble platform. If you go over to the um, uh, Weeble, I guess Weeble.com, the link in the description. Click the link in the description. Um, you sign up, you get free stocks. But then when you do sign up on the website, you can go over to downloads, download that platform, and you'll have this free platform. You don't have to pay anything for it. Green Day for GME. Um, I, I'm not 100% sure. It, it looks, it looks like it's following the market versus following um, AMC. They do kind of look similar, but it's just GME is taking a, um, an opposite approach here, being down 4% versus AMC being up 4%. So GME, I could say that it, it looks like um, it is following more of the market trend of you know dropping. Do I trade OTC? I don't trade OTC. Um, not particularly, like I won't do it all the time, but uh, I have done it in the past. <coughs> I just don't do it now. Um, but for GME, you could see a reversal. Hopefully we don't see it drop anymore. Um, but with the way the market is moving, it looks like things may continue to drop. But this is a green, this is a uh, red pre-market day. Who knows if the actual market will follow the same route? Even though, you know, I said we're seeing GME has a George W going on. Um, I mean, I really don't. I 
it could possibly have that in ascending uh, W, but um, I always like to see it have the touch points at the same moment to know that it's resisting um, um, or has a support level here. So I wanna see it have a touch point of either here, here, or here, um, just to see that, that W formation. Um, and then you could say whether it is going to increase or, or decrease and you know skyrocket or whatever. But um, you never really know exactly what could happen when the market opens because it can be a complete reverse field um, of the overall market. People could be really excited about getting into all of these low positions versus since people do drive the market, but then you do have institutions that control a lot of the big money, a lot of the big dollars. And if they shift it to different places, you could be down quite a bit. <coughs> Sold my position yesterday at $61 and CCP bought back in this morning on the low. That's, that's really good. I don't know if it is going to continue to go down, but either way, the low is like, what, $38? So basically you got in at half the price that you sold at. So now you can uh, make a decent profit on the way up as long as it continues to have the same um, you know, traction. So that's good that you got into CCIV at a low price. Is, is that a joke? Is that a joke? <laughs> that, that's funny. Have you checked? I, I'll, I'll go through it. Have you checked, uh, let's say, Bonner? Have you checked Bonner? It's huge uh, upside there. I'm not going to pronounce that the, the way you want me to pronounce that. I think that's funny. That's, that's hilarious. <clears throat> Y'all look like clowns bag holding AMC. I, I mean, it's your opinion, um, but there's a lot of people that are holding AMC for a reason, and you could see the positivity there. Look at, look at AMC compared to everything else in the market. Everything else in the market is down, um, you know, and not literally everything. It's just everything that I'm looking at here. Everything that I'm looking at here is down. Um, you have a big names that are down, but then you have things like AMC, which is a, very, a highly held stock. That's <laughs> yes, I, it's funny. Um, you have AMC. That's a, high, a highly held stock that's actually pushing up. That's up 5.5%. Uh, it's better than ICUP. <laughs> yeah, it's move. I guess I guess uh, Boner is moving a lot more than ICUP. <laughs> you guys are funny. You guys are hilarious. Join the chat to say your mom is a clown. I don't think she is. I mean, if she was, then I mean, what's wrong with that profession? I feel like. They make money, right? But she's not. What if she actually was then? Then you would, you would kind of be telling the truth. Patrick Becker. Thanks for joining the stream. If you could hit the like button. I appreciate that. <clears throat> I'm holding 50 shares at $6.03. I actually looked up. <laughs> Kevin G, I actually looked up ICUP. Did you get anything from it? I didn't even know if you could. There's, there's, there's got to be. It wouldn't have anything. <clears throat> what do you think when the market opens? Will AMC go up or down? So if you look at it, most times I like to look at the order book and say, what's going to happen based on the orders of the, the pre-market? Sometimes the pre-market will translate to the open, um, but then also sometimes it, it won't, <clears throat> right? So I like to look at that and see, this is where it gets confusing because it's, it's like that accounting answer. It depends because it does. But um, I like to look at the order book, but this order book has been like this for the past day. It's been showing a negative, you know, look on it with 52, having these buy walls or these sell walls of 52,000 um, shares. But 
it's been surpassing those sell walls um, with no actual buying potential. So do I think that it's going to increase? Yeah, I do see that it's going to increase. A lot of people have said that with the fact that um, it's a green day for AMC and a red day for everything else, people are going to want to chase the green day. And that's definitely a possibility. Some people like to chase the lower lows of some of the red positions. I like to do that sometimes. But yeah, I think we're going to see probably a, a green to, to flat day if we finish if we finish the day somewhere around that seven dollar to seven dollars and fifty cent mark that's a great day I, i'm happy with that day <clears throat> uh yesterday I, I i sorry i i got um distracted by this one i have to say this really slow because if i say it too fast then it it sounds like a different word. So someone said that someone's name is Mike Hunt. So uh, I didn't want to say that too, too close together. But I, there's a ton of those names. And I, I, love, I love those names. Like, uh, like I've said in the past, my, my wife's favorite is uh, Dick Fitzwell. Um, Having that as a, a first and last name would be amazing. Josh, thank you for uh, giving me a thumbs up. If anybody else could join him and hitting the like button, that would be amazing. <laughs> oh. Okay, Patrick was talking about, okay. One more time. Richard Hertz. <laughs> Do you know somebody named Richard Hertz? Bend over. That's a good one. Mike Hawk. <laughs> that's that's pretty good. <laughs> oh man. They call me long hold. He's pretty good. That's my wife's boyfriend's name. <laughs> what? First of all, you threw a bunch of things out there. That's that has multiple levels to that. That's my wife's boyfriend's name. <laughs> oh man, this is going this is going places. Mo Lester. I never heard of that one. <laughs> what are my thoughts on E? E or H E P A. <clears throat> so let's see what time. So during the pre-market, you could see it did it kind of follow trend, but it it ended up making a little bit of a move upward, um, especially as of late. You know, as basically as of now. Um, but yesterday, you can see that it was pretty flat, down 3%. It looks a really flat. Overall, it's down 3%. So from here, from close to close, it's down 3%. From open, open to close, where's close? Open to where it closed, sorry. Open to where it closed, it's not down too much, but it's down 3% from close to close. Um, but you can see it's very, very flat. Not too much movement here. And um, if I go through and look at the um, 10,000 foot view, it doesn't look like something that's a investable opportunity. I mean, um, something that's a slow grower, it's not showing it. Um, you basically have to cut it off in November. It doesn't really have too much history. You see a number of spikes, a couple of spikes here, little spike there, bigger spike there. You see a, a larger increase right here and then a massive sell off basically down to where it started. So um, do I think, well, down to where it started and then it picked up a lot. Um, do I think that this is a buying opportunity? I wouldn't say that this is. Um, I don't see this as, there's so many other opportunities that, are, that have a clearer picture. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that that's something that I would look at. If you have any, uh, if you're holding it right now or you're holding it um, and, and have a profit or a break even or whatever, um, I feel like 
there's so many other positions out there to where you can have better potential and more predictable potential. <clears throat> so thank you for the super chat. Um, check out OCC <coughs> and let me know what you think. I'm bullish on it. Let's see. So, yeah, I mean, as of late, it's definitely a mover separating from the um, 200 EMA. You can see that it is um, staying above, you know, the um, or 200 EMA is staying below the 15 moving average, which is a good thing. It shows that it has long term potential um, as it starts to do that. And you see it separate a lot more as of late, continue to separate and then flatten out a little bit. Now, it is a little bit iffy on the price action, the movement here, um, because it does move within that dollar range. Um, but, you know, if you look at the last day, you can you're up seven percent um, in and that's that's obviously really good. Um, you look at the sell orders that are coming in, you do have a number of sell orders that are in um, basically holding. You don't have any real buy order potential there. Um, but obviously things are on hold because it's not open right now. It's closed. <clears throat> but. Um, from basically December all the way until now, you've seen that crossover and it pretty much didn't really look back. I don't really like seeing all of these long wicks. I don't like seeing all of these long, um, you know, you know, pushes and pulls. Um, but the good thing is that, like I said, it is staying above the 15 moving average and the price action is staying really above the 200 EMA. So besides this one point of the price action going below it. But let's look at a closer view here. The thing that I really don't like to see here is all of these like quick touch points, nothing that has an actual candle wick. You see these big body moves, um, but like I said, it is great that it does have that crossover and you see some positivity there. So um, yeah, I think for the, for the um, time period, especially if you bought in um, earlier, I wouldn't say that this is a buy opportunity right now. It's definitely gonna move, I think, um, upwards it looks like, but it doesn't look like um, it's a buy opportunity now. Um, I would say if you got in a little bit earlier, then that would be more of a buy opportunity. If you're looking to gain sense of it, um, you know, sense out of it, then yeah, I mean, you can get something pretty decent by gaining, you know, 25 cents, you know, maybe 30 cents out of it, but it looks like there's a lot of movement here that's not really truly predictable. It moves like a penny stock, really. And it is a penny stock because the definition of a penny stock is below $5. So hopefully that does help. <coughs> yeah, I, I do need some laughs. I, I love laughing. I watch a lot of comedy movies. Um, I don't like seeing all of these long candlesticks. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, have you seen AMC in the pre-market? Yes, I have. They've been doing some, some good things in the pre-market. We have a thousand people in here. If you can hit that like button and get it above um, 1,000, or one, not 1,000 likes. If you can get it a thousand likes, that would be amazing, but get it to like 500 likes, that'll be phenomenal. Best comedy movies to watch when when stoned. I don't know. I don't. I don't smoke, but um, maybe you can watch uh, these horrible bosses. Hilarious. That, that's that's really funny. I don't know what type of comedy you like. There's different types of comedy. I watch all different types. You know, from comedy that's like daddy daycare, all the way to things that are like. You know Friday you know there's there's the child comedy all the way to like you know weed comedy super troopers is hilarious <laughs> wicks got you yes I don't like seeing all these long wicks <laughs> funny yes I just barely recovered um, from AMC. 
I'm I'm what? Is this a sign of a crash? It it could possibly be Hot Tub Time Machine is a great one, and Ace Ventura, Dumb and Dumber are really great as well. Step Brothers is hilarious. Um, but yeah, this could be a sign of um, AMC, um, or sorry, this could be a sign of a crash. Uh, definitely with how the market is actually fluctuating right now and you know moving. You could see. Let's look at. Um, I wish I had my, my screener set up on here. I still haven't really figured out how this all moves because I haven't been able to narrow it down to different areas that I want. I can't break that down too much. But yeah, this could be um, you know the start of a crash with how many people or how many uh, positions are actually moving downward very fast, um, especially like CCIV. But this could also be just a, a correction, like people are saying, a slight correction to where Talladega Nights is hilarious with Ricky Bobby. That's really funny. Um, but yeah, you're going you're gonna to see that this could be a um, correction. And that means that we could be getting you know, bottom prices in order to invest um, at these low prices and drive the price up again, which it, mean it, it means it could be a buy opportunity. Jim Carrey is gold. <coughs> have I seen uh, the Boogie Boys movie? I have not. Can you please review uh, GLE. <coughs> What's OCGN doing? So quickly, uh, OCGN is down 16% in the pre-market. Um, it's not really looking too great. At one point, this was at a pretty high point. It looked pretty decent, especially with how, how much it gained. But like I've said in the past, anything that has these quick growers can be a correction, really. So this could be a normal correction. The fact that it flattened out meant that it had uh, you know, fighting, you know, fighting power, fighting strength. But right now, you're seeing the full effects of one, the market, and also maybe a full correction back in onto this trend. I'm starting to go below the 200 EMA. If this crosses over, then you could see a real downward um, spiral there. You could, but you can also see it as a buying opportunity if you believe in the position. So uh, let's go into this. Someone asked me about GFE. <coughs> um, this is a $10, $11 stock, basically. Um, right now it is closed. You can see that... Um, had a lot of positive movement looking at a more you know 10,000 foot view I said I should say um, back from November is where it crossed over and you see a lot of positivity going upward um, the problem is one I don't know a lot about this position and I like to look at a lot of history to dictate what the future will bring um, but if I look at six months or look at a year um, it looks like it was pretty much positivity from the start you know, um, I don't really like things that don't have too much history, so I will have to uh, decline on giving a, any type of recommendation. Again, this is not financial advice, but seeing that the, the crossover is definitely a great sign and indicates that it could have a lot of buying power to it um, and continue to have that buying power, continue to drive that price up. Um, from basically here to where it's at, it's not really a huge movement, but you are seeing longer term uh you know growth here and when i say longer term i mean longer than one day but uh yeah three month price target s and dl now well if you're asking that way then you might get into it um but yeah i i would say that it, it's more of a, a hit or miss here without any history to actually dictate what the future will will give me and what where the price is it's technically out of on all-time high at these points so uh, yeah it, it's interesting but I can't give any type of recommendation you're just gonna have to continue to go uh, if it's based on history there's no history here so it continues to move up so I can give you S and DL S and DL is pretty much following every other um, cannabis stock position I believe everything is down um, but like I said the overall market is really down so with S&DL I just think it's pretty much falling in line 
um, three months, if I was gonna go out a couple of months to see how far this goes. This is one month. Um, so hit, we don't have uh, enough history to actually dictate what that will do. But if I wanted to say what was going to happen, I thought that it was going to follow this trend line on the way up. It did surpass that um, kind of on, on a negative way, but it, it went below that. And if it does end up crossing over, you may see a little bit of a um, you know, negative impact there, but you do see a lot of um, buy orders coming in meaning that people do want to buy up this position at this current price and think that it is going to drive up. I would say that one to two month prediction, um, if I was looking realistically without any spikes, I would say that you're probably looking at maybe $3. Um, and that's the, the best bet you could possibly get to. Um, but if it was, let's, let's break this down. If I was literally going on the same route that it's growing at, you know, maybe closer to, let's say 250 or $3, if we're talking um, two, two months out, maybe three months out being $3 or so. But depending on what happens in the day, we could have a market crash and then something will be, and then it will be, um, everything will be taken away. Any predictions that you do have will be taken away. <coughs> Reminds me of that girl at the party, pump and dump. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna to respond to that. Um, we have 1,156 people in here. If you could hit that like button, get it above 500 likes, that would be absolutely phenomenal for everyone, including myself. I don't know what, oh, you're talking to Tan Charlie up there. I was gonna say, Tan Charlie, only if you had, only if you had enough alcohol. AMC, pump and dump, let's go. I, I wouldn't say pump and dump. Um, the overall thought of AMC is that we need to um, continue to hold, continue to push that price up. Um, but I don't think you need to, just dump it. I, I think that it's more of a strategic play. If you want to take out whatever you initially invested and play with house money, then that's always a good deal as well. I didn't put money in crypto. I should have put money in crypto. Um, people have told me. What? 720p is more than enough. Yeah, streams only in 720p. I don't know why it should be in 1080p. I don't, I don't know why it's, it's not. I'll figure it all out and then we'll get all this situated because I am gonna do like different streams after we, we talk about, you know, AMC, go through everything that I have with these price targets. I believe that I'm gonna be streaming, but it's probably gonna be um, shorter streams, um, nothing that's crazy long. Um, I would have loved to do like eight hour streams in the beginning. That would have been amazing, but I just didn't, you know, have the time to do that. <laughs> ETH is down from $800. Well, oh, you're down 800. I feel like you're talking about crypto there. <laughs> uh, let's go back to popular right now. So AMC is still, um, it's at 3% now. So it's still hovering around that, you know, 650 to close to $7 mark. What kind of watch am I wearing today? Um, Carl, what are you doing? Does anybody see Carl here? No, 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 no. Um, I'm wearing a just a, a standard fossil watch that matches my. Uh, okay, here's Carl. Just, okay, you can just don't hit any buttons. Don't hit any buttons. So you start losing things. Let's stay over here. If you stay over there, you'll be fine. OK, 
Okay, I gotta put you down. <coughs> I forgot what I was talking about here. Uh, it's just a standard fossil watch. Um, it matches my my hoodie. Yeah, that's that's Carl. Cat buys more AMC. Um, what is the watch band you use on the fossil explorers? First of all, you're, it's way over my head here. What's the watch band uh, you use on the fossil explorers? Is that what type of watch I have right now? Because I don't, I don't know the names of them. But uh, I have all different types of watch bands, um, and I actually uh, take them out and um, exchange them and put them on different watches as long as they do match. But as long as they're a size 22, I believe, um, then I switch them out and they're easy to switch. But yeah, I got cat hair up here now. How long have I been streaming? Like, over overall, um, how long have I been streaming? Like, how many days? Um, I don't know. I, I've been streaming probably a couple of weeks now. Maybe, maybe two, maybe three weeks. I would say. Um, when I first started, I would have loved to do eight-hour streams, but um, this stream I started streaming fifty-one minutes ago. <coughs> No, it was the last watch you were wearing. The last watch I was wearing was um, a diesel watch. The watch I was wearing yesterday was a diesel watch. Oh, is that the the um, the name of the smartwatch? The the Gen Four, I believe. Then I just have the, the band that it comes with. I like the, the um, silicone band that it does come with because I, you know, if I work out or whatever, then you know, it holds the smell of sweat a lot better than like a, um, uh, a leather band or um, any other type of band, cloth band, whatever it is. But I have all types of bands for it. I've, I got a number of um, silicone bands but mainly I just use the black silicone one. What's going on with Tesla? What is happening with Tesla? I heard Tesla was dropping. <coughs> Why did I type that wrong? Let me just type in Tesla. <coughs> so what's crazy is I was actually watching um, Ricky Gutierrez's video a while back to where he invested at like 800 or something. Um, and like double down and continue to average down and people believe in Tesla and I obviously believe in Tesla as well. What they can do is crazy. But with this crossover, it obviously indicates that the price is going to continue to go down. If it can get sub 700, I think that that could possibly be a buy. I think the overall market is just going down. So I don't think it may be the beginning of a crash, but I'm not 100% sure if it's going to be a crash. But right now, Oh, it is sub 700. It's at 674. So, yeah, I mean, that could be a possible buy, but just wait for their bottom. Um, that could be a substantial gain that you could have up to $8, or sorry, 800 and some odd dollars, $850, $900. That would be a substantial gain. <coughs> yes, Gen 4. Yeah, I, it's mainly just a silicone band that I use on that sometimes i'll actually switch it out i like the look of a um a tan band with the black face that it has it just i don't know it, it just hits at a new level mm 
You think Tesla is crazy too high? <clears throat> well, this is the thing. Um, it's different. So if you look at if you look at Tesla compared to a lot of other uh, stocks out there, <clears throat> it's different with Tesla. Tesla, um, where people would classify them as a cult, I would classify them as being loyal. So they have a fan base that's completely loyal and people that stick by the stocks. I know people that have gained um, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars on Tesla by themselves. And doing that, you would think they would sell because the overall reason to hold a position is either to gain a dividend or gain profits out of it. And if you're gaining $500,000, you could put that money into other places to where you can gain a solid dividend with slow growth rather than the potential of this being overbought um, at a massive scale. So the thing with Tesla is the fact that you have a number of people that believe in it so much that they're willing to hold these positions even though they're up so many, you know, so many dollars on it. <clears throat> but um, yeah, so that's why I think that people think that it's overbought because yes, the company shouldn't be valued at what it is, right? It is a valuable company, but it shouldn't be valued at what it is. But um, looking at it, I would say with the fact that people are interested in this, that um, people follow this so much, that's the reason why the stock price has stayed the way it is. And the reason why it's going down right now is not because it was, you know, it's not valuable and people don't think that it's valuable. It is valuable because the people that are holding it um, make it that valuable. But right now it's just a kind of a correction of the market overall. You're seeing, um, you know, it's only 5% compared to other ones that are moving 5%, 10%, 30%. It's only 5%. If you look at it dollar wise and obviously a lot it's a lot but when do the americans receive uh your stimulus checks uh the stimulus checks right now it still has to pass the house i believe they they have the like the final bill and i put it in quotes um uh, because i never really think that it's 100 percent final because it has to go through all the stages but it's supposed to pass the house soon um but we're not going to receive it anytime soon and the thing is is um for some people maybe they already file their taxes and that's how they get their stimulus check um, because it's easier to get it that way because you can get it right away instead of having to wait you can file for your taxes get your stimulus check throughout your taxes and um, easily get that money in your bank account right away or close to it you know what i mean so um, it's easier to understand exactly when it's coming and you know how much you're going to get versus uh, not knowing how much you will get if you'll get the child credit as well. So um, it still has a little bit to go, but we're not going to receive it right now. It's not going to be anytime soon. It's definitely going to be more towards March, middle of March, end of March, when we will receive something. April. I mean, it's a possibility that it could be beginning of April, but from what they're saying, it could be end of March. But... um. I heard that it was a stretch. In the beginning, I heard that it was a stretch. <coughs> uh, imagine holding... Um, AMC, whoop, holding AMC until it hit 500, expecting it to uh, go higher, missing the sale. Then it crashed to uh, $49. Is, isn't that, isn't that what happened to GME, basically? There's a bunch of people that got uh, put into horrible situations. It is at 677 for Tesla. They got put into horrible situations by buying at the highs, thinking that it is going to go to $1,000. But if I ever seen that, there's no way in, in hell that I would ever you know, see a stock price increase that much rapidly and then invest at the highest point possible. No, that's not going to be me. I mean, I would have even been the person not to invest at you know, $50 as it was going up. Um, it really depends. So if I seen, um, obviously... 
um, the movement there, then yeah, I can definitely hold that line and gain whatever profits I wanted to gain, but I wouldn't have held, I'll tell you, if I did invest at 50 and seen it go up to 100, there's no way I would actually hold until it got to 500 unless that, see, I said there's no way, but there's only one way, I guess, um, unless you continue to see that drive upward and I can continue to add that, um, that stop loss, that trailing stop loss. <clears throat> so that's the only way that I continue to have that jump up. We have 1,272 people in here. If you could hit that like button, that would be amazing. Imagine having a $6 average and it pulls back 49. What is going on here? How long do I think the market is going to fail? <clears throat> it's kind of unpredictable um, where it's going to go. It just looks like the overall market is falling at close to the, the same rate. Some of the stocks are looking a little bit worse than others. Um, but yeah, I mean, it seems like CCIV is making a little bit of a, a pullback, but yeah, you're definitely seeing that fall in line. This is a rapid increase from $30 to $64. So hopefully this is a spot to where a lot of people will want to get in. But uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be tough to say how long it will be um, uh, a red day for most. Hopefully it will be a green day for AMC because it is starting to correct and come back. Um, it was down a little bit <clears throat> for a while and now it's back down to $6.72. Hopefully we can open at, at $7 um, or we can open up at this point and the price will drive up. That would be amazing. You have a stop loss on Facebook. I told myself I had so many problems with Facebook. I can never predict exactly where they were going to go. Um, and I actually, <clears throat> I think Facebook was the only stock that I really wanted to trade during uh, March. And when it was March of 2020, when it did hit the lowest point, and I think I was waiting for it to get to a certain point, and it didn't get there, it got close to it, and then um, I didn't invest in it, which I'm upset about because obviously there have been multiple times that I was upset with Facebook, but uh, I don't like to uh, just harp on these negative situations. So, um, but Facebook is the only one that I look at and say, that I've consistently lost money on Facebook even though it has a lot of volatility. It's something that I could not see and, and really predict exactly where it was gonna go. Short term, long term, where the bottom was. Um, but overall, it looked amazing getting up to $300, right? Or getting up maybe even higher than that. I don't even know, $307. Um, but with all of the volatility that you see here, it would look like a great stock to uh, day trade, great stock to the swing trade, um, but sometimes it just doesn't go your way, you know? <clears throat> but I don't have a stop loss on them right now. Right now you're just seeing the overall market being down. It's down 1% at the moment. <laughs> Why won't I talk? I did talk about CCIV. Talked about it multiple times. Thanks, Zuckerberg. <laughs> Yeah, I've talked about them multiple times. They're down 30% right now. Um, part of it has to be part of this overall market correction that's happening, but definitely part of it is a sell-off at being at the highest of highs. Um, <clears throat> this may be a buy-in potential. You just need to see exactly when a correction is going to happen or reversal is going to happen. It looks like this might be the case right now um, as you look into this. Um, you're seeing a little bit of an upward movement. It's a slight upward movement, but you're seeing a little bit of an upward movement from $33 all the way up to the $38 mark that it is now. So what is my position in AMC? I have seven, uh, 1,700, um, 1,690 shares um, at $9.38 of a cost basis. So I'm sitting at that point and I know that I wanted to get it below $10 because I know that 
AMC should be a $10 to $15 stock right now. But it could push higher depending on how much reversal of this manipulation that we see. <coughs> uh, any chance AMC hits 30 or 35 anytime soon, you think? I think there's a possibility because there's definitely um, an unknown factor here that you know we, we can say could push the price up a lot, but AMC has the potential to get to that point. It depends what your definition of soon is. Um, it could be a month, it could be a, a couple, it could be like a week or a couple weeks. It depends on what this price movement ends up being because if you look at, oh, let's go. If you look at what's happening over the last uh, day and a half, actually, let's put five days. <clears throat> you look what's happening at next, the last day and a half, you could see all the positivity, or even um, two days, really. And you could see all the positivity here throughout the pre-market, throughout the post-market. And then obviously during this day, you could see a lot of the increase that we did see. Hopefully we can see the same and continue to move up. That would be absolutely phenomenal. Um, but we are up right now again, 2%. Um, when it came to this day, I forget how much, how many percent we were up. I think it was like five. Might have been less than that. I think it was like five percent, I believe, um, from close to to pre market. I think we were up, but um, you could see that we got up to seven dollars and thirty four cents, eclipsing certain uh, sell walls. And um, I think we can definitely um, do some work here. We we are gonna be opening up in like thirty minutes ish. <clears throat> and we're going to see some good, I think we're going to see some good movement. Uh, hopefully it's not following the rest of the market, which is a possibility, but it looks like that's really one of the only positions that are actually moving in the right direction. <coughs> Copy. Let's see this. Peloton. Do I think Peloton is just a correction right now? It's down uh, 2%, 9% yesterday, or 10% yesterday. 10% is a, a, a very big move yesterday, especially when a lot of things were actually moving upward or actually having some positivity. So this may be a little bit more than a correction from what you see. Um, you see that it was you know, back and forth, let's say between that 170 mark and even down here to 140. Um, as of late, you could see that it was starting to decrease downhill slightly, did have a couple of pops, but then sold off really quick, meaning that it, it wasn't meant to hold at that point. You could see these multiple touch points here. They basically done the same thing. They weren't meant to hold at that point. They, the buy, buying power wasn't strong enough. But as it gets down here, you could see that people do consider it as a buying opportunity down here at 125 to where you can get back up to the 170 mark. But um, hopefully that's a reversal right here. You can see um, the reversal into more of uh, buying power. But again, you really want to wait for that to cross over in order to actually get to that point. But there's been such a decrease that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough to get to that point. <clears throat> so um, could be a buying opportunity. Definitely um, look out for what could happen here. You have a couple of buy walls, um, small buy walls at 120, 120, uh, $120.30, um, $120, 122. So you have a lot of buy walls there, but you also have sell walls. So definitely look out for where the true bottom is. Um, but right now we're down to two percent almost three percent here yeah you're welcome you're welcome chloe hopefully that does help um it's very tough to see these positions and think about it but um and think is it a buying opportunity or is it going to continue to drive down because you want to find that absolute bottom right that's what it's all about is finding the bottom so you can reverse field and make a little bit of money out of it if you're looking for like the long term, then that's something to where um, you really want to find where that bottom is because with the last couple of um, you know months, 
you could see that it was really hovering and fighting between that 170 mark and as of late the 150 mark so moving from the 122 mark up to 150 is a substantial move but even moving up from um one oh down to 118 or 122 up to you know one you know 40 is still a substantial move <coughs> Nice watch, thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, this is a fossil watch. I love watches. I mainly have fossil watches. I did buy a couple of newer watches. I, I think I talked my wife into getting me. Um, I always wanted like a diamond encrusted watch. Not anything that's like a million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars, something that's like maybe like a thousand dollars or so. <clears throat> and then obviously I would love a Rolex, but you know, Rolex is in the future. I feel like spending ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars on a watch, not worth it at this moment. There's better investments, even though they do hold their value. Um, there are better investments. And then even talking about it, what's great is talking about it on um, uh, on stream or on a video ends up giving me a a, a business write off because I used it for a video. So. That's also what's great about doing YouTube is you have business write-offs depending on what you talk about in that video, what you use it for. Um, so a lot of people don't know about this, but when you're, when you're gaming and you buy a new system for that gaming purpose, that's a business write-off. It's for your business. So I want to help out people and anybody that is streaming, anybody that does do this, you can actually um, have this business write-off. <laughs> yeah i mean i know you can get an entry-level rolex for less than 10 grand but obviously if i want to go ro if i want to go rolex i want to make sure mid-level is it a horrible move wait matthew white is wait matthew white who's matthew white a lot of people selling crypto and others to get an AMC. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say um, that, that that's tough. Um, I wouldn't think that. Yeah, it's, it's not anything that's like, like crazy. I'm not looking for something that has like, um, you know, one carat or I, I'll take even a point one carat. I just want to. Um, be able to see that type of watch. I don't know. I just always um, like those type of um, watches. And obviously, as you start to move up in the chain, I feel like watches are just something that I love to, to have. Something that's, you know, real like white gold or um, a silver or whatever. I, I guess you're right. It's just I do want something that's real but not like to the level to where it's like gonna be a hundred thousand dollar watch you know what i mean <clears throat> i just really like watches i like the look of watches and everything but i want something that's real but not something that i'm paying a hundred thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars for or a million dollars for i think those things are investments um but yeah You should get the watch Mayweather has. Isn't his like $10 million or something? That's ridiculous. Spending that much money on a watch is crazy. And, and then I've seen somebody that had like a diamond in their forehead, a pink diamond that, that cost more than like probably five celebrity houses put together. A fake watch has a story behind it. Can't buy that. I guess you're right. I guess you're right. All right, let's get back into AMC. Um, <clears throat> uh, hopefully, we can see some positive movement here. We're still sitting around the three percent, a little bit under four percent, a little bit. Well, actually, it's fluctuating. So three and a half percent. Let's stay with that. Um, the GME is still at down three percent. Let's look at a closer uh, look on these. 
It's still down 3%. We have 30 minutes until it opens. Um, I'm gonna go through this whole list of popular right now, right? It's down 11%. Um, that had a huge gap down, which I do not like to see. I don't like to see these huge gap downs, meaning that um, it had a quick like devaluation, basically, all the way down to this point, from $64 down to 50 some odd dollars. And that's not good, but right now it's hovering at $57, so it made a little bit of a recovery. Um, Tilray is pretty much following the rest of the cannabis market, um, or it may be leading the way, but uh, it it did have a negative impact today in the pre-market uh, and post-market, 7% overall down from close to um, where it is now. <clears throat> so that's obviously not good, but we are seeing a little bit of a recovery. We're seeing a bottom out at $22, which if we see a double touch point, that may be the bottom. And I always like to see if that is the bottom. Microvision's down to $18, which is not bad because it's up for um, for the last couple of weeks. Um, SNDL is basically following where uh, Tilray went. It is decreasing, has increased over the last um, 30 or so minutes, an hour, whatever, uh, whatever the time period actually is. But it hit a low point of $1.20. Uh, um, may end up pushing up to $150 today. That would be great. But <clears throat> who really knows? If it does push up to 150, then that's above where it closed. So it's a possibility. I'm not saying it is going to get there. It's just uh, my opinion. OCGN doesn't really look that great, down 15% from close to where it is now. Um, hopefully, we can see some positivity with that, but it looks like everything's going to be negative. Um, ZOM looks pretty good. Um, and by pretty good, I mean pretty bad. So <laughs> it has um, made a recovery. Um, to where it did have that crossover, which means that it would indicate an increase, which was a slight increase to where people sold off. So um, it flattened out, and now it's sitting at um, down 13%. Uh, Naked is down 8%. Um, did have a little bit of recovery as well. It looks like the overall market is following a trend of recovery at, as of late. Uh, FUBU TV, uh, or f is it FUBO? FUBO uh, TV looks like it's having the same recovery, uh, down 11%. Uh, Blackberries down 3%, Bed Bath & Beyond down uh, 3%. Uh, Nokia is down 0.6%. That's not something that's moving a lot, but um, I never expected to move too much. It didn't have the volume for how low the price is. It should have higher volume. Uh, AACG is something that's moving downward for the last couple of days and had a m massive decrease as of late. 4% uh, over the open and 7% basically now. Um, Thumb Power is down 7%. Vine is down 5%. Outlook is down 11%. Um, this position is crazy because how fast it grew to and um, you know it is decreasing slowly. You see it down 9% uh, yesterday, 5% um, over the pre-market, <coughs> which was FUBU TV. Why? I mean, nobody wears FUBU anyways. Yeah. Mayweather's watch cost $18 million. Yeah, it's, it's expensive. It's ridiculous. I don't know why you would spend that much money on a watch, right? We have 1,200 people in here. If you could hit that like button, that would be amazing. Um, <coughs> AMC has now decreased to um, basically to uh, close to three dollars or three percent of an increase. So it's starting to you know have a downturn here. Hopefully, the it doesn't follow the overall market. Hoping that we see um, some positivity at least here because one, I'm holding it there. Everything else um, that I'm looking at, uh, let's see if I do have any free stocks to go through. <coughs> All right, so I have 20 free stocks. Let's go through to see what free stocks I get. <coughs> so let's see what I get. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get a ADT. How many ADTs do you think I'm gonna get? Let's see, if someone can guess exactly how many ADTs I'm going to get, 
I'll give them a $10 Amazon gift card. But it's the first person that gets it. <coughs> so remember with this platform, you can get um, free stocks with Webull by clicking the link down below. Oh, you have to, I'm gonna get 20. You <laughs> think I'm gonna get 20? Everyone's gonna be ADT. You just lost there. There's no way I'm getting all 20 ADT. Um, we have 9, 13, 20, 10, 15, 13, 28. <clears throat> okay. 40. How am I gonna get how am I gonna get 50? I have 20 chances. It's out of 20 chances. 150? Come on now. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <clears throat> All right. I will have to review all of this chat because there's a lot of people. I think this was not a good idea. But let's go ahead and get into it. Remember, you can get free stocks down below by clicking the link, signing up, depositing $100, um, and you'll get the free stocks. So um, let's go ahead and check. So whoever said 20, they lost already. We got one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, I got 15 out of 20, that's crazy. <clears throat> so let's scroll up and let's see who said 15. There's a, num there's a person that said 15, there's a person that said 15, maybe before that, 15. <clears throat> okay, so the first person that said it was uh, Carl Bowman. So I will Uh, I will have to find you. <clears throat> <coughs> All right, so what I need is Carl Bowman to, s hopefully you have an Instagram. Let me know if you have an Instagram, Carl. He's gone. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of money from free stocks. Like I said, you can get free stocks by signing up in the description below. And what you do is you just, you can go to your family members and say, hey, you do have an Instagram. Reach out to me on Instagram and just prove that it is your account. Um, there's a certain area that you can go to that you can prove that it's you. Um, and, um, yeah, you can go, there's a certain thing that you could do to prove that it is you by showing maybe a screenshot of, you know, your email address and, you know, who you are. And then um, what I can do is I can send it over to you via email. That would be a great, a great way to do that. But reach out to me on Instagram, like, like right now, because people tend to do some weird things in order to get a... But either way, I'm going to validate that it's you. Um, but yeah. If you let me know your email right here, then I could, I could do that. But I, I'm pretty sure people don't want to put out their email address. So if you want to go over there, show me a, a proof that it is you. And then um, I'll look at your email. But yeah, do it right now before anybody has a chance to create any account. So, because I've had that happen in the past where I gave away Amazon gift cards. That's crazy. You can get free stocks um, from 
uh, Weeble. If you do use my link down below, sign up and deposit $100. But what you can do is go to your family members or people that you know and say, hey, look, there's this platform that, you know, one, you, if you're interested in trading, it's a great platform. And two, you can get free stocks. It's not only something like that. So um, let me, they also have other promotional periods. So like if you deposit a certain amount of money um, in a short period of time, you can basically get more free stocks. There was a point to where I had deposited $25,000 and got, um, I think it was 35 free stocks or 25 free stocks from that alone, from depositing the money into the account. And that was money that I already had sitting in a different account, so I just transferred it there. Um, I got the money, held it in there for the time I needed to hold it, hold it in there for, and I gained basically at least $250 worth of free stocks just by holding you know, $2,500 in there or $25,000 in there, and then I took it out after a while. Should have kept it in there because I didn't use this platform before. I used the mobile platform, but the, the desktop platform is amazing. Carl, you are a legend. <clears throat> Award Carl the price of all those ADT stocks combined. That's about um uh what? How much is the stock? Is it like ten dollars? If I got fifteen of them, it's one hundred fifty dollars. It's a lot. How'd you get twenty free stocks? So basically, when people sign up, um, you click the link. I clicked the link twenty times. <laughs> Come on, no um. Basically, when you, um, you sign up, <laughs> that's funny. Basically, when somebody else signs up under your link, then, um, and they do deposit the money, they deposit $100, that person gets the free stocks, but then also the person that referred them gets, I believe, a free stock of, of their own. So um, anybody that does sign up, I'll get free stocks as well. So it's like a win-win for both of us. But since I'm the one pitching it, obviously, I get something out of it. But the thing that you could do also is have that same link, put it out there and say, hey, if you're interested in a platform and you can always get free stocks, you know, it, it's free money. And it takes a while to clear. Um, I think I had some that cleared on the 21st, but I also have things that are clearing on the 1st of March. A lot of them that are clearing on the 1st of March. Um, if you could, please hit that like button. That's funny that Carl won, because my cat's name is Carl. Um, so, that's, that's great. He said he clicked it 20 times. That got me, that's funny. <clears throat> I messaged you on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Yes. I mean, that doesn't really give me proof that it's you on YouTube, but I'll, I'll take your word for it. Since you did just message me and I just got a message, I'll take that as the fact that you messaged me. So, um, all right. Um, great, I will send this over. I just need your email in order to do that, so. I'll put that in primary. So I guess I'll I'll send it now on on stream. As as long as I get the email. So just yep. can't spell today. 
That's fine. <clears throat> All right, so AMC is back up. That's good. We're somewhere around that 5% mark or 4.5%. So we're moving upward, which is definitely a great deal. Um, everything else really looks like it's moving downhill. Uh, CCIV is hovering around that 33% mark. Um, what did I do before YouTube? I feel burnt out from work. Um, I, I currently still work. I'm working as a senior financial analyst for a hospital. Um, and right now, I mean, obviously I have the flexibility because I'm home versus being in the office. Before, I would just upload one video a day. Now I upload two to three, sometimes four videos a day, plus doing streams. I'm always looking to um, do everything that I can. Thank you for the email, Carl. I'm looking to do everything that I can in order to make as much money as possible for my family and also, you know, um, talk about the things that I love to talk about. I talk about this stuff to people and they always just kind of, I don't know, it goes in one ear and out the other. So, yeah, I mean, it, I, I don't like doing that. I don't like talking to people for no reason. And like every time I'll, I'll talk to like, my brother-in-law or I'll talk to some people that are interested in stocks they like to talk about that stuff and I love to have conversations over that um, because there's a lot of potential and I love talking about making money and you know um, what my goals are all types of things like that it's always fun to talk about <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry, I'm just going to send this gift card over. <clears throat> Give me a second. <clears throat> Don't sell. Man, I'm, I'm not selling. Are you talking to somebody else? These alerts for price drops are depressing. Yeah, I mean, they could be depressing, but they could also be buy opportunities. You can look at them as a, a really good buy opportunity. Right? So... <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna send that over right now. Could have a little COVID. I don't have a little COVID. I'm good. All right, give me a second. Cause I don't have my, I hate that Amazon asks for extra stuff in order to complete your purchase. I'll be, Literally right back. Um, I'll be right, right back.
All right. So, I'm gonna put this back on. All right, I sent it over. So thank you for playing everybody that, that played. Maybe we can do that, you know, every time. You can see what's, what's happening with that. And hopefully, um, oh, AMC is now at 5%. So it's moving to that, that $7 price target. Hopefully it can eclipse that. We do have a bunch of sell orders coming in at $7, 69,000 sell orders. Um, you can see that we do have more sell order orders than buy orders here. So, um, yeah, I think it's pretty interesting. <coughs> AMC is still making moves, yes. He needs a co-host. Yeah, I mean, that would be great. I would love if um, Erica and I can do a, um, a, like a live stream podcast that we used to do. You know, I, I love doing podcasts. Um, I'm actually going to be uploading a video um, I don't know if you guys watch Jubilee, but I'm reacting to the Jubilee video to basically talk about if all OnlyFans creators uh, think alike. And I thought it was really interesting. Um, and uh, I recorded 30 minutes of content, but I needed to shrink it down below 20 minutes. So I did shrink it down, which I cut out a few parts um, here and there. But uh, I think it's really good. So um, that's over on the Perry Experience channel, which if you go to my channel, you can see um, that link, there's also a link in the description, I believe. There should be something. Maybe not. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a link in the description. <coughs> but if you go over to my channel, you'll see it. But yeah, I'm going to be uploading a video there soon. I don't know when, but maybe later today. Not 100% sure. Weeble is picky about linking bank accounts. I, I haven't had an issue and I use um, a different bank account. That's not something that's, it is well known as a national bank account, but um, I haven't seen that they're picky. And that's just me. Maybe it's other people that use certain bank accounts I can understand. Is it me or the stream only 720p? Yeah, I know. I don't understand why. I need to figure it out. <clears throat> because I have a, a 4K software, I have a 4K camera, but for some reason the stream is only in 720p. My internet is the best internet you could possibly get, even though um, Xfinity wants to kind of uh, look at, I, I, don't, I don't know what they're doing with their internet. Now they're starting to put limits on house internet, internet for your home to being like one terabyte or something. And I use a lot of internet. <clears throat> which I feel like this is the worst time to do that because everybody's working from home. <laughs> You're going to be paying so much extra in internet costs. New York City is bringing the volume to AMC. This is where I think that it might not be um, um, <coughs> they're bringing the volume to AMC. I think that might be like hiding what's really happening. Because the overall market is down. It's not just news that's bringing this up. It did, uh, it did get to $7, but now it's starting to decrease. You got a lot of people that had orders filled at $7. But you are seeing a little bit of a recovery. Um, there was a ton of orders at $7. So those got filled, drove the price down a little bit. Um, <coughs> sorry about the cough. What is my favorite long-term play? Um, change your output resolution to 1080p for streaming solutions. Uh, all right, I'll have to look into that. Oh, thanks, bro. Fidelity didn't approve it. Well, that's, that's weird. Fidelity does, is, was never tricky about bank accounts. But long-term play, favorite long-term play um, as of now. I'm not really a long-term option. When I do look at long-term plays, I will look at mutual funds, index funds. Um, <coughs> geez. But if I had to look at long-term plays right now, it's very tricky to say because the overall market is down. But I would definitely go with something that's you know high in price, that moves quite a bit, that people are you know um, 
kind of not stuck with, but they they are kind of like a cult, like Tesla um, or like an Apple or like an Amazon, something that people stick by no matter what actually happens. They even they they see it drop by or, you know to seven hundred dollars, and a lot of them are saying it's still a hold opportunity. You could buy more, double down, and all those types of things. So you look for opportunities like that um, if you're looking for a long-term stock play. But typically, if I'm going long-term, um, it will be anything with dividends. Um, so you can find a dividend position, whether it is an ETF. I would say you can go with, let's see what SPHD is doing. Um, <coughs> SPHD is up um, uh, basically half a percent today, but it does pay you um, a dividend, which is going to be great. I mean, I like to hold on to positions like these monthly paying dividend positions. Um, that's what that's what I like to go with. <clears throat> Check the streaming settings on your graphics card. Okay. You can get unlimited internet from Xfinity. I do have unlimited internet from Xfinity. This is the thing. Every every internet should be unlimited. I guess they always have to a point. They always have like um to a certain gig um, that you need. I think I think it's maybe like they'll do like 100 gigs or whatever. <clears throat> but I have um, a thousand gig speed, or I have gig speed basically. So um, it, it will move at a, a, thousand, a thousand megabytes per second. So a gig, <clears throat> but it's the the overall usage of that so you can only use a terabyte worth of data which is a lot of stuff but i can tell you that we've gotten close because of the amount that i use i'm always online always streaming always doing something when it comes to the internet um so yeah <clears throat> do i game yes i game i have um i game on the pair experience channel i haven't uploaded something in a while i'm looking to if you game then definitely add me on xbox um, you can see my gamer tag over there, so go ahead and do so. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> All right, so maybe I can do that. I have to look into that, into my streaming software. I'll definitely take a, a gander into that, but right now the market's about to open. I don't want to have to walk through that now. But we're seeing some good movement here. But yeah, that would be my favorite long-term play. Thank you for the um the super chat by the way but let's look into what's happening that's popular right now <clears throat> you can see that it is moving we are uh it's moving down now uh i wonder what the volume is right now so before we get into the open <clears throat> let's see what the volume is right now so this is today no that that was yesterday. Yesterday's volume was at um, 165 million. We gotta wait until the open to see what that, that volume is. Um, but that was a crazy day. Hopefully we can see the amount. I live in PA. It snowed a lot and we shoveled a lot yesterday. What the hell is happening to Tesla? Is Tesla really dropping? Let's look at... <coughs> Oh, wow. Well, yeah, Tesla is down to $661. That's crazy. That may be a buy opportunity there because it might get up there, but you might want to wait. That's a huge gap. But these are days that we're looking at. So <laughs> let me go back to popular right now because things are open, things are moving. My, my child upstairs is doing weird things. I don't know what she's doing. You can see it is decreasing at this moment. Yes, it did get up to $7, and now you're seeing um, a little bit of a sell-off, but you see a lot of buy orders coming in here. It's crazy, you see so many buy orders coming in here, but it's selling off. So down to 3%, hovering around that 4% mark. Everything else is pretty much staying at that decreased mark. Um, do you like to cook what food? Potatoes? <laughs> yes, I'll cook potatoes. I'll cook mashed potatoes. I cook a lot of stuff. I cooked lasagna yesterday. Um, I made a very quick lasagna, very slim lasagna, less meat, more cheese, more of a cheese lasagna. Um, it is going back up to 
seven dollars up six percent let's see if we can continue to to push this up get it up to eight dollars that would be amazing you see all the sell orders that are coming in at 710 720 719 728 730 you have a lot of sell walls here that i think we're going to continue to to pass you can see the only positive thing that's happening right now look at this 10 percent almost 10 percent it's really moving compared to everything else ocgn's down 20 percent amc's up 10 11 percent it's really moving amc is doing some work here here comes the uptick one <laughs> wow 12 percent look just wait for i'm telling you i'm telling you something weird is happening here we have a lot of sell orders that came in that are being filled um but the buying power is absolutely strong it's it's crazy look 341 sell orders that are coming in at seven dollars and fifty cents we're still moving upward this is crazy the market dropping because people are talking about are taking profits from the stimulus checks this is crazy seven dollars and fifty cents look at this look at this really making moves here we're about to pass seven dollars and fifty cents even though we have a sell order we have a ton this is going to be a huge wall if we can surpass this wall it's going to be a really good day if we can surpass this wall if we can push past this and we can it's going to be a really good day i know it's tough because these sell orders are coming in at a massive scale right but look at the buying power we're really fighting it no matter how much um you know selling power is there we're really fighting it with the buying power we're up to seven dollars and 39 cents seven dollars and 38 cents up 12 percent today you look at gme and we're starting to push up as well gme is making some moves hopefully it can get up past $46, that would be amazing. But you do have a lot of sell walls that are coming in. For GME, um, you can see that it is standing strong somewhere around that $7.40 mark. Let's see if we can continue to push up. Um, <clears throat> this is why I didn't understand that it's, AMC was over. It's just getting started. Yeah, I think um, it, it, it definitely looks that way. <clears throat> you can see all of the sell orders that are coming um, in. So it's starting to push it down a little bit and maybe coming back to earth a little bit, which, which is fine because with any um, increase, you are going to see a little bit of a fall. It's great to be able to see these large candlesticks here. The amount of volume that happened here was 3 million, 15 million right from the open. And we fought that, that downward spiral. <coughs> we have about 3 million here, um, uh, 2 million here, 2.1 million here. Um, thank you for still doing GME. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking to continue pushing GME even though I, I sold it and people may say oh you feel salty yeah I mean I feel a little upset if it does go it does go up but you know what can I do now I just move on right <clears throat> uh, GME is actually moving down a little bit more hopefully we can find a way to push up to that um, $46 mark get it up right now it's it's one and a half percent basically um, you can see that crossover which indicates an, an increase. Wow, that was a large drop. Um, but AMC is holding strong at that 11% mark. Um, it does have a lot of sell orders coming in. We may see a little bit of a downturn, but you are gonna see that with any sharp increase, you're gonna see a decrease here. So that's just what happened. Now, if we can continue to push this up, continue to drive the price, and yes, we do have a lot of sell orders that are coming in at that 750 mark, to where people are looking to take profits at that 750 mark, but I guarantee you it's going to continue to push up. Let me look at exactly what's happening with my fidelity. I should have gained somewhere around <coughs> close to $2,000 um, right now. My account has been locked. What the? What in the world, man? Fidelity locks your account for like the littlest thing you miss one one login and they tell you to how am i supposed to remember it if i keep having to change it you know <coughs> so amc is really making a, a push down hopefully it can stay you know somewhere around that seven dollar mark <coughs> looks like we have a lot of buy walls a lot of buy walls especially at six dollars and 76 cents um we have some uh, smaller buy wall at $6.80. Uh, 
but hopefully we can stay at that $7 mark. That would be amazing. But like I said, with any sharp increase, you're going to see a decrease. That's just how things go. <coughs> Let me just log in here. It's taking me forever to log in. I have to reset. Oh my goodness. All right, so we are seeing that push up. Um, see what my portfolio looks like I would have liked to have checked it at 750 where it was at but you are seeing a little bit of an increase here that's good You're seeing these positions so right now instead of being down 4,700 from what I was yesterday I'm up um, or I'm still down four thousand dollars totally but um, I am up today seven hundred and twenty six dollars <coughs> So yeah, that's that's always a good thing. So let's not click the arrow. Uh, what about Doge? <clears throat> let's see what's happening everywhere else. So right now we're still hovering um, around that six percent mark from where we were, basically at the pre-market. Hopefully we can stay at that seven dollar mark and you know have that fluctuation to where it does increase to seven fifty possibly get over that during you know the end of the day you always see that fluctuation where people do end up selling off and you get all the people out that you wanted to get out and then eventually you have that uptick again so hopefully it follows um, the right trend and continues to move up yes yes you're right this is a bloodbath we were going through it means uh, you're going to be rich in a few months right now. Yeah, um, I, I would say with all of the decreasing here, all of the movement down with everything, you can see that, um, wow, it's down to 43% or $43. Um, you can see that we can get into new lows where we can make a decent profit out of it because everything is down. Ch uh, Churchill Capital down 42% today. That's crazy. It definitely is moving downhill. It's not looking great. Uh, let's see what what crypto is looking like. So crypto is down to 47, uh, 47K from 49K. So that's not too bad, but it is bad from where it was at like 50 something. So um, yeah, just to give you an understanding of where crypto is, Tesla is down almost um, 10%. Uh, let's see where it's at. Recently viewed Tesla. It's down 16%, down 10% probably from the open, open, but from close to close, it's down 16%. That's crazy, wrong Tesla. <laughs> I, I spelled that wrong. Yes, you're right, it's down 10%. I was looking at the wrong thing. Um, but yes, it's down 10%, crazy, $642. Like I said, you want to pick where the bottom is going to be because I think it will recover because a lot of people are interested in this position. And I may be a person that ends up getting into this because it does look like something that can really pull back. But I want to see where the bottom actually is before I get into it. Because this could be something that if I invest in a few, um, you know, maybe 10 shares, I can easily gain back the $3,000 that I lost on, a on GME. But I just have to pick the right spot because... Tesla is definitely uh, definitely moving down, but it has potential. So let me look at this as popular right now <clears throat> and see what the move will be there. Where is it going to end? Where is it going to stop? Where are the support levels? Where are the uh, resistance levels? You have a lot of people that are still selling off, a lot of people that are buying. 
about to give me a heart attack. I definitely look at it as a great um, opportunity. If you're already in it, then that's where it ends up being tough to take because you want to see it get back up to 800. But yeah, Tesla is overvalued, but for the people that are holding it, a lot of people look at it as a very strong, um, you know, uh, buy a very strong uh, stock. Somebody told me to read the news out of China. Yeah, a lot of the market is red today, and AMC corrected itself. Like, you mean that it went down when you say corrected itself? Oh, wow, now it's down 5%. So now it's really moving down, which may create a better buy opportunity here. But yeah, it's, it's starting to follow the rest of the market. The only thing that was up was AMC. It was really pushing up. I mean, you did see some movement, some green movement, but so many uh, bad things that were happening. It's not just AMC that's tanking. It's the overall market that's tanking. <clears throat> yes. Yes. <coughs> You are gonna see some some positivity if you do take a hit, then or if you do take a full crash, a full on crash, the market just doesn't look good today. It does not. It looks really bad today. Overall, I want to see how it ends because it's not necessarily how you how you start. It's how you finish, right? So hopefully we see um, some positivity throughout the rest of the day. Um, Um, I wouldn't say it's the day traders that are doing this. It, it's more or less just overall people. And I, I never really understood how the overall market can crash like this when people believe in positions. The only way that I can see that they can, that the stock market can actually manipulate a crash is by institutions selling a large number of shares or moving a large number of shares. Um, I never really understood how the actual markets can fully crash without buyers or buyers or let's say retail investors um, being more into selling a position than buying a position. So um, what if another Great Depression? I don't, I don't know if that's a thing. I mean, as I look into it, I don't know if that's really a thing. Um, saying that it is a Great Depression, saying that it is a, a huge crash. Um, because I think that we recover a lot better. It's mainly driven, the stock market is driven off of people. So it's all based on if people start panicking. So if people say, hey, you know what, the stock market's crashing, I'm done, I'm out. And then that's where people continue to start um, selling all of their things. I'm not saying sell, it's just people like um, what clouds of uh, 420 say, um, weak hands sold. Um, weak hands are continuing to, to sell. And I understand what your thought process is. You see the price go down. You want to make the most money you can. You sell everything you can sell. And then it goes, and then eventually it goes back up and then you start to buy in again. But it's all based on buyers and sellers. Wait, what'd you say? Uh, 860,000 new unemployed filings? How can a market be good if <clears throat> no one is working? Good luck. You're, so that's where it's very tricky. I always seen that the, um, the stock market followed the actual economy. A lot of people think of the economy as the markets. If the markets are doing well, the economy is doing well. Well, the economy hasn't been doing well, so it made no sense why the market was doing so great and it's mainly because people had so much time to stay at home and do something different 
being unemployed, having new um, money or taking that, that leap to trade or taking that leap to invest. And that's why the markets ended up fluctuating also, or it started increasing. Also, with the pandemic, we're forcing people to spend money at big businesses, businesses that are Walmart, that are Tesla, that are, um, I don't know, Target, whatever. And that's why those prices end up increasing because people are spending money more in those areas, which they seem like those are more investable places, right? Because obviously those are only places that you can shop, the corporations that stay open. Um, but yeah, that's one big factor. And it it's really tough to look at this and, and say that one is following the other because really it all depends if the economy has the money to invest, then you'll see it increase. If the economy doesn't have money, you shouldn't really see it increase, but we did. So that's where it ends up being tricky. And now we may be seeing a correction based on the actual economy <coughs> to where people are, you know, taking out money, you know, selling some of their assets because they're getting to a point to where they can't really function off of just having their income or lack thereof. What is SNDL doing? They're down 22% today. 22% down to $1. You were holding on from what point? That's basically like half. <coughs> is, S is SOS a good buy on the dip? From what I hear, there's a lot of um, speculation with SOS um, that there's um, fraud, a potential fraud or something. But uh, I'm not 100% sure if that's certain, if that's true. Um, yeah, I mean, um, sorry, SOS. Let me let me go there because Tesla is definitely um, going to make some moves. Tesla is supposed to go to 400 by two weeks. I don't know about that. <coughs> There's so many people that are that are um, you know kind of bag holders in Tesla, um, but SOS could be a good buy at the dip. Uh, let's see where SOS is. Do I have? I should have them on my main screen. I don't understand where they are. Let's look at them here. Sometimes. Oh wow, it's really dipping. So yeah, it could be a good buy at the dip. We just need to see a, exactly what's gonna happen. Um, you need to know where the dip actually is. We don't know what's gonna happen the rest of the day. It looks like it's gonna be a, a, a total red day and we may see it go downhill for a number of positions. So uh, definitely pick your spot. You know, even something like Bitcoin is going down, um, Peloton is going down. Uh, SPHD, which I just talked about as a dividend option, is going down slowly but surely. You know, it is only 0.15%, uh, something that's not moving as much, but you can gain a dividend off of. <coughs> Be greedy when the uh, when others are fearful. That's what um, hedge funds end up doing. You should get that cough checked. I'm just, I just, I'm just recovering from a cold. How long is this market gonna crash? It's, it's tough to say. I would say we'll know what's, if, the, if it's going to flatten out by the middle of the day, because typically we see more of a charge towards that 12, one o'clock um, you know, portion. So hopefully we can see something good, but you never really know. Um, it's, it's, it's really tough to say there. Forty-five thousand. Here we come again. I don't know what that means. Anyone else buying Tesla at the dip? I think I am. I'm. I'm looking at at Tesla as a very great opportunity here. I mean, I I don't know what the actual dip is. If it can get sub six hundred, that would be absolutely phenomenal. But we still do need to see where this movement is because it looks like it is sort of reversing, but you do have a number of sell orders that are coming in, a number of buy orders. These wide range candle candlesticks really indicate that it may be uh, you know, time to push up from here. So 619 might have been the dip. You might have seen some really good positivity here, but this might be a false dip. 
the the problem is is that it it probably is not a false dip because you look at the indicators here and they're very like wide candlesticks so it might be might be pretty good and you see it increase in here you see it going from um, 619 to 633 <clears throat> you see a lot of people buying a lot of people interested in that um, I'm definitely interested in it <coughs> Down $74 today, moving quite a bit. So yeah, there's definitely some movement here. But um, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and um, I need to end the stream soon. We have eight minutes and I wanna see um, what will happen um, in the time being. What will be some big moves here. <clears throat> but overall, I can say that, you know, I'm up. up what 700 700 or so so oh wait now actually i'm down because of amc did reverse so i forgot i didn't refresh <clears throat> It looks like a lot of things are good. I'm looking at Tesla to see if there could be another buy opportunity here, but I'm, let's see. I think there, I think there was a great buy opportunity at 619, but yeah, it was definitely very interesting to to see Tesla drop that much. And hopefully they can continue, they can increase and gain a significant amount of money today. Hopefully go up, you can see it correct itself. That's what I'm hoping for. Sorry for like the, the total pause here. But yeah, I wanna keep an eye on Tesla to see what they can do. Um, but let's look at what's happening with AMC. So AMC is now up 1% again, that's good. We can see that movement, the positivity there. Um, OCGN is moving upward. It was down 26%. We can see the positive movement here. Um, where's Churchill Capital? Churchill Capital is down 42%. It is making upward movement as well. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think this is gonna be uh, a pretty bad day slash good day slash, I don't even know what to classify it as. <clears throat> what is my cost basis? <clears throat> so I think I'm going to end the stream there. Um, well, I still have five minutes. AMC is making weird moves. It's going up and down. Um, I want it to continue to increase, but the overall market is just down. <clears throat> it's pretty brutal today. Yes, it is. Um, but Tesla definitely looked like a great buy at 619. You might be able to see that hit its low. Hopefully we can get, we can get like a double bottom or something. <clears throat> That'll be amazing. But if we could get a double bottom, then that would create a large entry point for a lot of people. 
but you can see these wide um, candlesticks. I don't think it's going to find a way to decrease past that you know, 635 mark. Hopefully it doesn't come back to the, we wanna see it cross back over <clears throat> and actually have a good day. But yeah, I mean, certain positions just look absolutely phenomenal. Um, other ones you can gain a lot of money from, so definitely look at it as a positive. I'm seeing these dips and uh, try and ride it out, try and make some money from it. <clears throat> but um, yeah, let me know what you guys are doing with AMC. But I think that's it for the stream. Um, it looks like a negative day. I'll try and do another stream later today. I think I will have sometime i'm not 100 percent sure but it might be like a 30 minute stream um, just to give you something on what i felt happened during the day make sure you check out some of my other videos that i uploaded um today um at 7 30 and i believe 8 30 so uh and then i'll probably do a video on tesla to break that down to see exactly what's happening but um i also want to do something about the overall market so let me know your thoughts on all of these positions make sure you comment down below i'll respond to some comments but people, the people are losing some real money. You continue to give advice. You have no idea. Your analysis is garbage. Okay. Using the investment terms loosely, going to be a bad day. What? How am I using the investment terms loosely? It's, it's currently a bloodbath. But the point is, is that people want to find ways to buy at the dip. You buy at the dip. You can basically make money. You look at this and you've seen that um, Tesla was a great opportunity to buy at the 619 mark and gain a decent profit up to 650. So it could be a good day for you if you didn't buy in until you figured out where those dips actually are. But if you're holding, then it's a bad day for you. So it depends on your situation. Not using investment terms lightly, not using any of... Um, my knowledge in the wrong way, the wrong fashion, like that's not the case. I'm trying to pitch what's actually happening and you can see that it's good and bad off and on. AMC is looking good and bad at times, looked great in the beginning of the day, looked bad um, towards, um, it is still the beginning of the day, but looked bad towards the um, later half of that 30 minutes. And then you seem to start to level out, start to increase. So I don't know what you're talking about here, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm ending the stream at this point, but uh, if you feel some type of way, comment down below. I'll I'll definitely respond. Um, but yeah, buy the dips. Um, I feel like the dips are definitely where it's at, especially with things like a Tesla or things that do move at a high dollar amount. You can make a decent amount of money from the movement there. So anyways, that's my video, guys. Um, that's my stream. Make sure you check out my stream later. Check out all my other videos. If you want free stocks with Webull, check out the link below. Um, sign up, deposit $100, and you'll get free stocks. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, it could be people that are new, but I'm not a financial advisor. Um, but that's my video, guys. Thank you again, and I'm going to get out of here. So I'll catch you guys in the next stream.